Phil, uh, a hard earned performance from Harriers to get the three points. Another clean sheet on the travels and uh, seeing the game out in a professional manner. Hard, hard earned win down to the fact that we made a couple of silly decisions and allowed them to get a foothold in the game when we went 1 0 up early on in the second half. I never thought it was going to be easy. Um, we had words before the game and you mentioned the words war of attrition. You expect that at Peterborough Sports. I've got first hand reference to that from last season uh, where they don't let you have a breather. They don't for one minute let you get out your penalty box with any kind of ease, you know, or clear lanes with any kind of ease that putting their bodies on the line. But that's what Gashi demands of, uh, demands of his players. But for to see him uh, being sent off in the manner in which he got sent off was surprising to me, if truth be known. But it just shows you, even managers at this level are under pressure, especially player managers, you know, when you're actually trying to show everybody or teach everybody. It's a difficult situation to find yourself in, but you can't you can't say what you say to, to referees the way he has done. And listen, I'm, I'm not going to berate him by any stretch of imagination because it's a frustrating it's a frustrating game, especially when your game's not going your way or the game's not going your way. But it, at nil-nil, you know, we had a couple of half chances, a couple of good chances in the first half, if truth be known. I asked the players um, purely and solely to base the whole, whole performance on hitting the target. Whenever we get into situations which we are on a regular basis in, in most games, just hit the target, just work the goalkeeper. I don't think we've had a clanger. I don't think we've, we've seen a goalkeeper or a defender drop an absolute clanger in front of goals for us to score a goal. We've actually got to score some brilliant goals and we are doing that because we've got some good players. But we made hard work of it in the second half, having gone 1-0 up early on in the second half. And we had a, you know, a couple of really good opportunities, especially Ash Emmons at the back post. If he should have left that to Reece Devane, he's got to tap in. Um, the, the chances were few and far between second half because we were trying to keep possession of the ball but when, when we lost possession of the ball they asked a question by turning us straight away and they've got every right to do that when you're down to 10 men but we dealt with it um, we dealt with the majority of things that came our way from their perspective even in the first half and I've got to you know take my hats off to um, the back three the back five whatever you want to call it the clean sheet mentality of the group this week we asked for nine points but if somebody had said to me uh, I can't guarantee you nine points, but I'll give you three clean sheets in three games. I'll go. Ooh, well, I'll take some of that because I, I know we're going to we're going to create chances at this level. And then we've just got to grow a pair first and foremost in front of goals. And then we've got to go grow in confidence, and hopefully when them chances keep coming our way and, and we start winning games of football on a regular basis, everyone grows in confidence and the belief comes. If the belief comes early in, in this in this season, we've still got a chance, there's no doubt about it, but I've never lost any hope or any faith in, in this group and we're grinding out results as we did today, but you're never going to do anything else apart from that at Peterborough Sports. It is a grinding kind of performance, but one that I'm very pleased with the players and I'm certainly proud of it, that's for sure. Yeah, they put in a big shift in there, as you say. It, 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 it's probably you know, the, the, the big focus being another clean sheet, three in eight days. You know, you, you've demanded that from the players and they, they, they've given it to you. You've got to, you know, you look at individuals and, you know, we've, we've changed to a back three. Is that is that made the difference? You could say yes if you if you want to, but uh, I think bringing Cam Candle in, I think he looks uh, assured um, centre-half, no doubt about it, and consequently because of that, I think Rhys Devine has grown in stature because of, of the presence of Cam. But we can readily switch to a back four during the course of the game. Joe Fawkes, Keller Richards, Rhys Devine, all of them can play in the fullbacks role or even play third centre half. So we've got, even though we've got well, only five defenders available to us um, on the field of play, we can morph into different systems during the course of a game, which a lot of clubs are struggling to, to deal with. If you asked us what we played, I would say I would say we played 3-4-3, three, three, but many, many times when you look at that in a freeze frame, it, you can say it's a 4-3, one out way, two up top. It, it, it can change, it can... I think fluidity these days is, is so important in the modern day game and I think all coaches are, are guilty at the highest level of, of creating that you know the, the Pep Guardiola's of this world have got the players that can do it during the course of the game but consequently that it will come down to whatever level and you all think you can do it but you know you've got to get coached where that's concerned and, and that's what we're trying to work up with with regards to the uh, the system that we're playing at the moment and the players that we're using. You say that, nice curious time on the right hand side, Hemming on the left, a, a little switch just to, to open it up a bit. Just trying to help Maz, um, as we know, uh, him and Ash Hemmings both scored three goals in five games at the start of the season. 
the strike force was was marred by the the Amari Morgan Smith um, situation where he goes concussed in 21 days protocol. But since he's been back, you know, you know, Amari's now our leading goal scorer in in cup and uh, and league events, and uh, he's got himself a goal in a one 0 victory. That for me is a, a, a good striker. Um, you probably mentioned uh, Erling Haaland. Man City have won one nil, and and Erling Haaland scores the the winning goal, but. You've got a grain result, so everybody probably thought before the, the Man City Southampton game that it would be a 5 0, 6 0 job. You might have thought, second half when we got the early goal, it might just be a landslide now because they're down to 10 men. It doesn't happen that easily in the game of football, but for Amari, club captain, and now leads the lane as our number nine, for him to get a, a winning goal in a 1 0 victory, we can sing the praises of the of the clean sheet mentality, but we've got to have somebody stick the ball in the back of the net. It was there, it was at the right place at the right time. Phil, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you talked a lot over the last week about the clean sheets and how important has, has Dibs been? Because you talked about Cam and how assured he's been coming in. I think the Harriers fans were singing recently McNally's name all, all day today and Caleb Richards is uh, developing into a bit of a club legend. But Dibs kind of goes under the radar because he didn't have to make too many saves today, but he just gives an air of calm, doesn't he? Matty, they're the hard games for goalkeepers. You ask any goalkeeper that he has to keep his mentality at the right level. Uh, you can easily switch off and, and you know, enjoy the, the game because we're playing majority of the possession, which you expect to 11 against 10, certainly in the second half. But when moments come along, he stayed with the crosses, he stayed with the flight of the ball, he stayed focused, and it's his mentality that, that gets the clean sheet. Uh, if he's on a clean sheet bonus, which I hope he is, he deserves it, there's no doubt about it, but he will readily he will divvy that up to everybody in front of him because at the end of the day, he knows without the mentality of the group in front of him, he can't keep a clean sheet himself. Did they have any clear cut chances? Not really. Um, did he have to pull any world class saves off? Not really. And because of that, you think, well, he, he should have a clean sheet, but they're the moments, they're the ones where you're just lapsing concentration. Next thing you know, you've dropped the ball and it's spilled and it's gone in the back of the net. Dibs is not that way inclined. He's, uh, he's a great lad. I knew his father very well. Great, uh, great family, and uh, he deserves a clean sheet more than anybody. And the Harry's fans will have a, a good journey home tonight. They were fairly noisy all afternoon, and uh, they've done some travelling as well over oh, the week, haven't they? Some miles, haven't they? Um, no, they they've turned up. I love I love the away fans. You know, they, they seem to turn up and they seem to have the right attitude, mentality. They're on a day out and. Uh, Having a little look at Needham Market last week and having a little, bit, little look at Peterborough Sports. Some of them have probably never been here. Um, and if they haven't, uh, now they have, they've seen what it's like. And, and it's a grind. You can have a look around. And I'm not saying it's a bad stand or a bad football pitch or a bad club. It's a grind when you come here. It doesn't matter who you are. It could be an FA Cup third round tie against West Ham. And you'd have to grind a result out because everybody's in your face. And uh, I think, again, if I did a head count at the end, we probably had more supporters in the home site. I don't know if that was the case against Needham Market last week, but it looked like it was today.